Over the course of this last year, we have all developed new habits. We had a major shift in our world, and that changed the way we do things. It changes our priorities, it changes what's important to us. And so some of those habits were good, and some of those habits probably not so good. I think we're at another shift in our world right now, which means it's another time where we will be developing new habits. Truth be told, we can develop new habits anytime we want to. The question is, are we developing holy habits? Are we developing habits that honor and please God, that, that help us to follow Him more fully in our lives or not? Actually, in every field, there are disciplines. And so the old adage goes, how do you get to Carnegie Hall? Practice, practice, practice. Honestly, how do you get good at music? Well, you play the guitar till you have calluses on your fingers. How, how do you get good at math? You, you do math problems over and over again. Uh, those free throws, they're so important in basketball games. Does it just happen because you have talent? No, it happens because in basketball practice, you shoot free throws over and over and over again until it becomes natural to you. So even in this last NCAA tournament, Final Four game, Gonzaga versus UCLA, Jalen Suggs, overtime sinks a basket almost to half court. And many people said, oh man, it's a lucky shot. But if you listen to the coach after the game, what you heard is he practiced that shot every single time they practiced over and over again. He was good at that shot because he practiced it. The next sermon series will be covering spiritual disciplines. Two books that have been wonderful in that are Richard Foster's The Celebration of Discipline and Nathan Foster, The Making of an Ordinary Saint. I recommend both of them to you. In Nathan Foster's Making of an Ordinary Saint, he lives out these disciplines and chronicles that journey for us. He also gives us a wonderful explanation of spiritual disciplines on page 16. It says the concept of the spiritual disciplines is really quite simple. We do the practices that Jesus did. Over time, these practices become habitual, thus enabling us to respond to life in a way more like Jesus would if he were to live our life. And I think that's important because the spiritual journey we're on it's not one we go on by ourselves. And salvation doesn't end with us believing in Jesus. It includes sanctification, making us more like Jesus. And God wants to see our lives changed. And so holy habits means habits that make us more like Christ, that have us set apart for him. And those don't just happen automatically, do they? We need to spend time and effort following after Jesus. And so it's him working in our lives. It's him transforming our lives, but us making a concerted effort to spend time with him, to let him change our lives, to find that as a priority and importance for us. Malcolm Gladwell in his book, Outliers, he makes the point that it takes 10,000 hours practicing something for somebody to be great at it like to be an expert at it. So if you wanna be a great musician, 10,000 hours. You wanna be a great computer program, programmer, 10,000 hours. You wanna be a great athlete, 10,000 hours. There's no shortcut to that. And if people can dedicate 10,000 of their hours of their lives to be experts in these things, how much more should we be people that are willing to at least dedicate 10,000 hours of our lives to seeking after God and letting Him transform our lives. How do we do that? We spend time on these spiritual disciplines. We, we spend time in God's Word. We spend time in prayer. We spend time uh, submitting to His will for our lives. We spend time with God and let Him change our lives. So may we be a people that develop holy habits in our lives.